There's a secret that many frugal people use all the time. And I'm going to share this with you as soon as I find my video clip back in a minute. morning. Good morning. This is Jan from New York City. Channel name Jan from New York City saves money and I truly love helping people keep some of their own hard earned money, including myself. How are you doing today? Two announcements before I get into the secret. Announcement number one, that I will be participating in a collab with no other than Dawn from the Sensible Living with Money Mom channel. And the second announcement is that there will be a premiere chat. And that will be at 11 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Eastern, when? Today. So if you happen to be available at 11 a.m. Eastern today, I will be at the premier chat. Hopefully at the time of this recording, that's my plan. But plans could change. <laughs> no, I'll try my best to be there. Hopefully you will get there. All right. After all this announcement, which basically is the announcement, the best secret that frugal people, frugal people, did I say frugal people? Frugal people, whoa, Jen, you know what? I seriously need coffee. I did not have my 25 cent cup of joe today. That's not fair. I definitely need to make some. Anyway, it's okay. All right. So it may be midnight for some people listening now, but when I'm recording this, it's actually 8.25 a.m. the week before. Hello. But I need my coffee. I didn't have it yet. <laughs> Uh, here's a secret that frugal people keep. Whoa. You know, the idea of frugality is about choices, not deprivation. I try to make wise choices. I try to be mindful before purchases. And for me, I've done this so long already, it doesn't bother me. Was I always like this? No. But here's the secret part. There are some principal rules that frugal people live with all the time that it does not make a difference what the economical climate is around them in the world at large. And that's the secret to know that if you live with certain financial principles, no matter what is going on around you, you will be more or less likely to be more okay than the person that lives a who cares less type of lifestyle type thing. No, some things, honestly, they just tried and true and they just logically, factually a better thing to do. Doesn't it make sense to prepare to have a stockpile, for example, a couple of items at a time, not, the, not earth shattering amounts. No, 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 no. You don't want to burden yourself physically lugging all the stuff. You don't want to burden your pocketbook either. However, it's about being consistent in small increments. It's the consistency and the increments, whether it's incremental saving for your stockpile or whether it's incremental saving to your savings accounts whether it's for your emergency fund or whatever fund, name it and claim it, even if it's down to the most simplistic level of your change jar, okay? Following certain principles in a positive, good way, consistently. You see, that's the trick. Conversely, a person could take a negative habit, like they might say, oh, I'm just going to do one of this small bad thing today, like have just a small cookie or two today. But if that person really should watch what they're eating and they have two small fattening cookies per day, after seven days that week, that person ate beyond a dozen of the small, innocent, innocuous cookies. You see where I'm going with this. But getting back to the secret sauce of frugal people, Frugal people live a consistent lifestyle with good choices, wise choices. You could still get a very good quality piece of furniture at the thrift store instead of spending 
bright, shiny, brand new furniture at the expensive furniture shop that may not necessarily be the greatest quality. It may look cuter. It may look more modern. I get that. And like sort of like that throws some people off. I get that. Something from the thrift store could still be considered new to you. It may be old to someone else and they got tired of it and they, you know, sent it to the thrift store. But for you, if you've never had that item in your life and you cleaned it up a bit or painted it or whatever you did to it to personalize it uh, for yourself, it's new to you. You see where I'm going with this? Doing certain things in your life, little steps, not earth shattering steps. It's the little steps that count. Believe it or not, it really, really does. Even when you're cooking, batch cooking, for example, reading that box of pasta, and it says that a person can get eight servings out of the box. That's a lot of servings for something so inexpensive. So why not, if you like pasta, if your family enjoys it, why not consider that as the main dish? So when you're doing, for example, your batch cooking, that cooks up easily without sweat off your brow. And that's something that you could literally get eight servings out of. You could make it ahead of time, for example, and dress it up the way you want, either with a simple jar of sauce or canned sauce or flavor it up your way or cut up some mozzarella sticks, you know, those little uh, those string ones. You could cut those up easily and count how many you're going to put into each single serve portion and freeze. There may be a night you want pasta and somebody else doesn't, but it doesn't matter. You just take it out of your freezer and heat it up. This is what I'm trying to say. There are ways and there are ways. You don't have to call in for food all the time. Choices. If people don't think that those numbers don't add up, they're making a big mistake. A lot of money is wasted on outside food. And just because you didn't leave the house to get the food, it still qualifies as outside food if you're calling it in. Are you paying for a tip? Yes. Are you paying a higher price for the convenience of someone else cooking it? Yes. I'm not saying these are always bad things, but this cannot be done all the time if you truly want to be, to be frugal, okay? So let's get back to the outside economics of things. I hear these words, the inflation word sometimes, you hear other words like the recession word sometimes. In my life, to be honest with you, makes no difference because my principles of frugality remain the same. I'm still going to live below my means. So sometimes certain things I may have to cut back on and flip, flop, flop, flip and work around it. For example, like the choice that I made to not get bottled water as the mainstay and use my, for example, filter. You know, the pitcher filter, the one you put in the refrigerator, very, very cheap. I saved a ton of money doing that. And yes, I do keep some bottled water in case of an emergency and I cannot use my tap water to be filtered, for example. So just by using basic principles all the time, no matter what goes on around you, and that's the secret sauce, you'll always more or less be okay by following those frugal principles. Hey, hope to see you later. Don't forget to check out Sensible Living with Money Mom. Her collab is at 11 o'clock our time, but uh, 10 o'clock her time. And uh, check your listing to see what time works for you best. And uh, there will be a premiere chat on my end or her end, either one you want to go to, totally fine. But I want to let you know it's available. Thank you so much for being here. And I really do appreciate who every single one of you have an amazing, fantastic day. See you later. Bye.